What's up everybody? Shield from Man here. So today I want to uh, make a video about feminism being pro-war because there's this notion out there that feminism is supposed to be anti-war and anti-militarist or something like that and uh, uh, City Crusher uh, made an excellent video uh, in response to a feminist uh, who was talking about uh, selective service, male-only draft, and she was defaming uh, the National uh, Coalition for Men, men's rights, uh, uh, men's rights organization. So, uh, so you you should really check out his video here. All right. But yeah, in this video, this woman, uh, whose name is is even uh, shown here, uh, uh, you, you can see it here, uh, Mac Hamilton. Okay, and she claimed that uh, she and her organization and feminism in general is anti-militaristic -mil and sort of anti-war, right? Well, let's actually look at the evidence because I'm not convinced on that and actually I will totally debunk that myth. All right, feminism is pro-war, pro-imperialist, uh, 100% actually. Okay, so now let's actually look at her organization. So her organization, um, uh, where... where uh, where she belongs to it's called women's action for new directions or want for short right women's action for for new directions and this uh, organization is you you can see it right here women's action for new uh, directions or want is a progressive national non-profit organization that seeks to empower women to act politically to reduce violence and militarism and redirects excessive military resources towards unmet human and environmental needs okay so they pretend to be anti-war basically and they I saw uh, their website there they was basically uh, putting war and militarism at the hands of men they think that's patriarchal and it's nonsense like that right um, but yeah let, let's actually look at her uh, the the video uh, the the YouTube channel of um, the official YouTube channel of them right women's action for new directions their youtube channel and who look who they platform here on, on this panel on a uh, brief on the ukraine uh, crisis for legislators they say supporting ukraine and they put on here um uh, on on the panel uh rachel rizzo senior fellow at the atlantic councils Europe Center. So and and you know uh, she gets interviewed here, right? And uh, basically, also the the, the moderator uh, said that she also has written for CNN and uh, stuff like that. And so so you can see that the Atlantic Council has like working relationship with this uh, supposed uh, anti-militaristic uh, women's rights slash feminist uh, organization, right? But if you know anything about anything, you know that the Atlantic Council is a uh, war hawk type think tank who, uh, which, which promotes uh, NATO war propaganda. All right, so here we can see uh, the Atlantic Council and Latin American regime change. 
Okay. Founded in 1961, the Atlantic Council is part of the NATO Offshoot Atlantic Treaty Organiza uh, Association, described as an umbrella organization which acts as a network facilitator in the Euro-Atlantic and beyond that claims to draw together political leaders, academics, uh, military officials, journalists and diplomats in an effort to further the values set forth in the North Atlantic Treaty, namely democracy, freedom, liberty, peace, security and the rule of law. Now this is all uh, propaganda of course. Uh, these supposed uh, values. It's all about imperialism uh, and profits at the end of the day. And it also says here Atlantic Council board members include Henry Kissinger, former CIA chiefs Michael Hayden and Mike Morrill. Uh, so so as, you, as you can see uh, not really the most trustworthy <laughs> right um, on Brazil Atlantic Council personnel could be found uh, yeah, yeah, could be found quoted in the press and on television networks or eugelizing Operation Lava Jado normal, normalizing the eugelizal uh, eugelizal uh, slash parliamentary coup d'etat which removed Dilma Rousseff and also promoting the neoliberal program of uh, Mikhail Temer's post-coup government such as fiercely resisted cuts to workers' rights and a program of pension reform which would raise retirement age as high as uh, 74 for millions of ordinary Brazilians which is above life expectancy in some areas of the country. So yeah, as you can see, the Atlantic Council promoted or normalized coup d'etats, after which neoliberal uh, reforms were introduced. So as you can see, this is imperialist uh, connected think tank right and they and the so-called women's action for new directions works together with them platforms them right so if this this organization pretends to be anti-war and against imperialism is it's nonsense as you can see feminists are uh, tied to war and imperialism or promoting coups at, at the very least or normalizing them all right okay and even even this fact checking site uh, says that overall this atlantic council's uh, right center bias based on a pro-corporate hawkish, hawkish military perspective Okay, so as you can see here, Atlantic Council, why NATO should adopt a feminist foreign policy. Okay, this, this is ridiculous <laughs> to say the least, but shows you that NATO is actually interested in promoting feminism. Okay. And, and, and like I said before, they, they platform someone from the Atlantic Council here. Um, wow. It, it's just wow, in my opinion. And here this Atlantic Council even says why Azov should not be designated a foreign uh, terrorist organization. Do I even need to comment on that? To be honest, do I need to even say anything about that? It's fucking ridiculous. So, uh, according to Atlantic Council, um, 
literal fascists should not be designated a terrorist organization who go around slaughtering people in Ukraine, slaughtering Russians, right? Slaughtering minorities. I mean, wow. It's ridiculous, actually. And, and, and this is... And these are the, the people that get uh, platformed by Women's Action for New Directions or WANT. And yet, w w when you look at their, their website, they pose as anti-militarist, anti-war, but as you can see, they're NATO approved, basically. They're NATO approved. Um, wow. Here I also found this, like going a little bit into their, the funding of this group, actually. The Dark Money Shapeshifter, another voter re re res uh, re registration effort. Uh, here it says right here. The Colombi Foundation is also a major supporter of Women's Action for New Directions, WANT, a feminist activist group founded in the early 1980s as Women's Action for Nuclear Disarmament and renamed after the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991. Want lobbies Congress for the eradication of nuclear weapons and shrinking the national defense budget in order to direct military spending towards unmet human and environmental needs. The group regularly stages protests and marches in Washington, criticizing supposedly militarized patriarchal culture. So, with the patriarchal, uh, they are smearing men directly which makes them bigoted, in my opinion, all right? They are putting out their misandric side very openly, even though historically women, those women who actually were like queens and female leaders, they were actually more likely to get involved in war wars. I actually covered that s several times on my channel. Uh, that led the Uni United States into endless war and violence. Meanwhile, they have Atlantic Council <laughs> members uh, being platformed on, on, on their YouTube channel, on their panels. Ridiculous. Since uh, two, 2002, Colombia has given uh, $1.5 million to WANT, Okay, so, so they, they funded basically the group. But I also wanted uh, to get at this here. Edit Eddie Allen is founder and president of the Columbia Foundation, though Al Allen isn't listed on Columbia's website and makes almost no appearance online in connection to the foundation. Uh, the left-wing website Source Watch describes Ellen as a veteran volunteer with WANT. Ellen has been a board member for the WANT Education Fund since 2009. While at WANT, Ellen reportedly met then student volunteer Nyla Bolos, an activist who later worked as exec executive director of the Plow Shares Fund from 1997 to 2011. Ellen herself was a member of the Plow Shares Fund Board of Directors from 2009 to 2015, a board which at various times has also included s such luminaries as Plow Shares President Joseph C. Sirion. A former Center for American Progress Vice President, Hall Harvey, CEO of the Climate, Wo Climate Works Foundation, former CIA officer Valeria Plame, Iranian religious scholar and media figure Reza Aslan, and former 
Obama Administration Secretary of Defense Chuck Hagel. So the, the, they even have like CIA connection here. Uh, at least with this, uh, with this Edith Allen, who's like connected to the Warned Education Fund. She was uh, on a board which also included CIA officers and Secretary of Defense of the Obama administration, right? So yeah, we have them being, again, like NATO connected, CIA connected, but they pose as anti-war, right? Absolutely stunning, actually. So this woman who belongs to such an organization this feminist who belongs to such an organization has the nerve to pretend to be like anti-war and, and stuff like that. It's it's ridiculous, actually. It's wow. I, I'm I'm just wow, right? So, but but there's more to show and about this. So this is like the the, the website of Warned, right? It says Warned stands with. Ukraine and condemns Russian invasion. And it even promotes here, uh, it says here, we firmly support immediate non military actions, including sharp multilateral sanctions. So they want to sanction Russia. Or they, they supported that, right? And as we know, sanctions actually only hurt the, the little people. They don't do shit to uh, to stop conflicts. Okay, this is this is horrendous shit, to be honest. Okay, so they're, they're a bunch of neoliberals, a war hawk, pretending to be not war hawk type people. Okay, so this is like the first ever major point of evidence that feminism is 100% on board with war and imperialism all right also speaking of CIA connection he is um, Gloria Steinem and of course she has CIA ties which she admitted uh, in 1967 Steinem revealed in an interview with the New York Times she worked full time from 1958 until 1962 at the Independent Research Service, which was largely financed by the CIA. Wow. I mean, do I even need to say something again? This is imperialist backed 100%. Feminism is imperialist pro-war um, what what can I tell you right what can I tell you he's even uh, Jimmy Dore covered this um, female warmongering general eyes natural uh, resources in Latin America so uh, y y you should watch this video um, I will link it in the description it's basically about this um, female general Laura Richardson who is basically having keen eyes on the on the natural resources in Latin America so again this is more evidence that feminism is pro-war all right it is also imperialist it is um, promoting positions for women to basically expose their their militaristic side, right? So, but but there's there's more that I want to show you. Okay, here's the article. Uh, 
New York Times promotes a woman's right to annihilate millions. Uh, in May 15, New York Times opinion piece quotes the nuclear weapons sisterhood uh, and quote editorial board member Carol uh, Giacomo complained that women were quote particularly underrepresented in senior positions dealing with nuclear issues end quote Giacomo further lamented that government policies quote involving the building deployment targeting and use of nuclear weapons have been have long been at uh, have long been the province province of an insular innovation averse group of men in quotes the column asserts that for women people of color and transgender people sexism discrimination and harassment are often barriers to being hired, promoted, or taken seriously in the national security, bureaucracy overseas and at home, end quote. Giacomo, a member of the Council on Foreign Relations and a longtime media figure on the intelligence diplomatic beat, noted that women hold only 20% of senior civilian jobs at the Pentagon and are particularly underrepresented in senior positions dealing with nuclear issues. The Times journalists took pains to disabuse any readers under the impression that she was advocating a strong female presence because of old-fashioned views of women as more pa pacific creatures. And they're not more pacific creatures, by the way. As I have shown many times, again, female leaders and queens historically were more, more likely to get involved in wars and more likely to start wars. This is a fact. Okay, reading on, G.I. Como observed that there is little, little evidence uh, women are inherently more peaceful than men and pointed to a forthcoming paper that goes so far as to argue that in certain parliament parliamentary democracies, female uh, women leaders feeling a need to prove their strength may be more likely to initiate conflict than their male peers. So this this time journalist actually admits that women would actually be more devastating as leaders, uh, like in terms of warfare. And she's still like complaining that they're not more uh, female leaders. So she, so again, this this female, or uh, or this 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 feminist, uh, Times New York Times journalist, is a war hawk. Does the author of the paper have Hillary Clinton in mind? Let's the the reader think the column was written tongue-in-cheek as a parody of feminism, the reader should think again. G.I. Como and the Times are deadly serious. Of course they're serious. I mean, th th there's always this notion that when feminists say something atrocious that they're just joking. But they're, they are dead serious. When feminists say that they are for the reduction of the male population, they're not just joking about that. Her argument represents the ultimate logic of feminism, which accepts the capitalist order and the exploitation of the working class, merely insisting the, that bourgeois women have an equal share in operating and benefiting from the profit system. Concretely, the demand for more women with the ability to drop nuclear bombs occurs within the context of the hashtag MeToo sexual witch hunt, ferociously backed by the Times and the general drive for more women in positions of corporate and political authority. Yeah, this was a very good take. And also I like that the author of this article called Me Too a witch hunt. This is very accurate. So as you can see, the feminist New York Times 
uh, promotes women having the right to uh, use nuclear weapons. Isn't that, isn't that lovely, right? So yeah, again, more evidence that feminism is pro-war. So here we have the, the left party in Germany, also called Die Linke. So uh, of course this party is 100% feminist. So here we have women have been well represented amongst the elective representatives from the left. The party's gender quota requires that at least half of the party's ruling bodies and representatives should be female. So, so they have a woman quota basically. So again, they have like 100% feminists. This is not controversial at all. And yet, look at this here. Germany's left party declares support for war with Russia at Erfurt Party Congress. So, uh, just to give you an example from this article. Um, uh, let's see. Turing German minister President Bodo Ramelow, who was celebrated prominently at the party congress as the only left minister president in Germany's uh, 16 federal states, made it clear that the left party as a party of government is already involved in the supply of arms. So, so, yeah, the the left is is already involved in the supply of arms, sending weapons. They're for sending weapons to Ukraine again. A feminist party, right? Also, war hawk. More evidence. And let's just get to actually the worst offenders in this regard. The Greens or the Grünen, right? Also, like, uh, also a f extremely feminist party, to be honest. Uh, one of the worst feminist parties in Germany. Um, there you ha have a woman statue, separation of office and mandate. So. Um, Greens consider the woman's quota to be necessary until a balanced ratio of men and women in politics is achieved. Uh, other privileges for female party members are the woman's vote and the woman's veto. At the request of the least 10 women who are titled to vote at the federal level or by one individual up to and including the state itself, a vote must be carried out among the women present before a regular vote. At all meetings, the majority of the women present can exercise a veto right to postpone a proposed resolution to the following, following meeting. So they have an extra veto right in this party woman that is not men only women so th this is very clear that this is 100 percent a feminist party all right and now the warhawk connection from doves to uber hawks ukraine war recast germany's greens so uh, Habeck, the economy and climate minister, and foreign minister Annalena Baerbock, the cabinet's leading Greens, helped overturn a long-standing policy of both Germany and their own party to send defense weapons to Ukraine. And they have since gone significantly further, pushing Social Democrat Scholz Public, publicly and privately to send heavy weapons to you uh, to get yeah, to Ukraine 
to Kiev. Wow. So again, this feminist party uh, sent, sends weapons to Ukraine. This for for even more weapons to Ukraine. So and, and they they even got chanted at warmonger, warmonger, and and rightfully so, rightfully so. All right. <laughs> I mean, if, ever, if anyone thinks that feminists are against war, they're delusional. And this is not something that is um, just recently with Ukraine. Greens back NATO ab admit uproar. Okay. Germany's co-governing Green Party. And, and this is an old article. So this was uh, back when uh, NATO... Uh, they had a bombing campaign ag against Serbia. Germany's co-governing Green Party last night rallied to the support of its leader, the Foreign Minister Joschka Fischer, in his backing for NATO's bombing campaign against Serbia, Serbia after a day of high drama and violence at a watershed congress in, in the party's 20-year history. The Greens voted by 444 to 318 to, su to support Mr. Fischer and defeat a motion demanding an immediate and unconditional end to the NATO bombing. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I mean, this is... Um, This is ridiculous. I mean, so so the the leader of the Green Party back then backed NATO in bombing Ukraine and uh, not Ukraine, uh, Serbia. Okay. So, absolutely ridiculous. This party history and this notion that the. Uh, that feminists are anti-war and also when it comes to sending weapons to Ukraine study suggests arming Ukraine would prolong conflict okay so um, study from 2012 actually showed that the conflict that arming uh, uh, recipients in civil war actually increase conflict. So study su uh, the study's conclusion is clear. Giving major conventional weapons to recipients makes conflicts deadlier and giving major conventional weapons to states is associated with longer conflicts. In either case the transfer of major conventional weapons to those engaged in or about to engage in a civil war does not make for an effective conflict management strategy it is likely only to uh, it is likely to only make conflicts worse end quote so those those militaristic feminist parties who are like yeah we need to send weapons to Ukraine they're actually prolonging the conflict so again it is no debate anymore whether or not feminists are pro-war they are absolutely pro-war okay and again this is also here about the SPD the SPD is now the leading party in Germany with Chancellor Olaf Scholz and the SPD has said anyone who wants a human society must overcome male society so I, I don't even need to comment on that they're 100% anti-male and yet also Ukraine 
German lawmakers overwhelmingly approve heavy weapons deliveries. So under Chancellor Scholz, who is from the SPD, which is anti-male, also sending heavy weapons to Ukraine, which again prolongs the conflict there, which again makes this feminist this feminist party pro-war which again proves that feminism is pro-war all right here's another article why we as feminists must lobby for air defense for ukraine we are critical of militarization but we believe pacifism will kill and that Russia's war crimes have left us with no option, says this article. So, I mean, what more evidence do you need that feminists are pro-war? So, they believe that pacifism will kill? Wow. Wow. I mean, I don't, I don't even need to comment on that. This is, this is ridiculous, right? So the title also could have just been "Why we as feminists must lobby for more war." This could have been just the title and would basically mean uh, the same. It's fucking atrocious. So, so here's e even the feminist guardian admitting feminism as imperialism george bush is not the first empire builder to wage war in the name of women so this article is about how women's rights ha have been used as a pretext to invade uh, the middle east uh, respect for women can triumph in the middle east and beyond thrilled the leader of the free world to the UN last week. The repression of women is everywhere and always wrong, he told the New York Times. Warning, warning, uh, nay, wa warming to his theme that the West should attack Iraq for the sake of its women, just as he bombed Afghanistan to liberate the, the women from their burqas. So, uh, so George Bush basically made feminist talking points in order to justify his warmongering in the Middle East. So you can see how dangerous feminism actually is. And, the, but, and by the way, they, they would never say, uh, oh, the, the men and boys are in, in danger in, in, uh, in those countries. But that aside, you, you can see that feminism is a tool for imperialism or can be used as a tool for imperialism or is in itself imperialism because they they just assume that women are uh, oppressed in the Middle East which again in a future video I will show you that this is not the case this is imperialist feminist myth making and bullshit at, of, of the highest order all right and again, historically, the suffragettes were pro-war. The White Feathers campaign, the suffragette movement, was split by the Great War. Most often remembered are pacifists, but the militant history of the feminist war supporters in Britain and the audacity of the White Feather girls who shamed young men into enlisting. So we cannot repeat this often enough with the White Feathers um, campaign, how they were, f how feminists were eager to sacrifice men in World War One. Disgusting. So any any feminist who who's like, oh, we are for the, uh, we are in the tradition of historical anti-militarism, as feminists or some shit like that. They're complete liars. Just bring up the 
white feathers campaign. All right? And feminists even benefited from World War I. World War I strengthen, strengthened women's suff suffrage. Uh, suffrag uh, suffragists' conscripted rhetorical claims advanced in favor of the war and pointed to women's key role on the home front to bolster their arguments in, in favor of domestic expansion of voting, voting rights. So this scholar admits that suffragists, suffragists were in favor of, of the war and were using that using the war as an argument to benefit from it wow so more historical evidence that feminism is pro war what more evidence do you need seriously so yeah i mean i, I think we got through all the articles here yeah yeah, we, we went full circle. So, again, like I said, her feminist organization, NATO approved, NATO connected, CIA connected, imperialist, fake anti-war uh, feminist organization. Uh, also, these feminist parties in Germany uh, arming Ukraine to kill Russians and prolonging the conflict with uh, uh, prolonging the, the conflict in Ukraine which even a study admits that this is happening when you send weapons into armed conflict uh, all right and yeah so and, and also historically the white feathers movement so any any moron and any vicious liar who says that feminism is anti-militaristic and is uh, against war and is against imperialism is lying or stupid but most often they're lying all right so uh, that, that's really all I want to talk about. I see you in the next video.